I'm going to give you my recommendations on how to load out your Origin 100 series starter, and we're starting right now. Origin jump boards at your service. Core system operational. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers that make this possible. Welcome to a Star Citizens loadout guide. What's up citizens, this is Subliminal here and in this guide we will discuss my recommendations for both weapons and components for your Origin 100 series. I've decided to cover their loadouts in a single video due to their similarities. Our primary build has a focus on PvE, but I will be covering stealth as well. My full review of the 100 series will be coming soon, so make sure you're not one of the 60% of viewers and are subscribed. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this guide. Come over and give me your thoughts on the 100 series and my loadout. Enough with the formalities. Let's get to it. The 100 series are light luxury touring spacecrafts developed by Origin Jumpworks. They are created to be an entry level luxury ship alternative to Origin's more expensive 300 series of ships. The purpose of this build will be to maximize your damage and survivability in the verse with an emphasis on PvE. As for PvP, well, you should be avoiding that in the 100 series. I recommend this build for the whole series, but this guide will be based on the fighting variant 125A. Remember that the 125A has better components than the other variants, so when I say something may not need to be upgraded for it, that may not apply to the other variants. The only differences between the variants are the better components and more missiles on the 125A. Now that we understand the objective of this build, let's take a look at its components. We'll start with the power plant that generates power for our weapons and components. Standard power plant on the 125A is the size 1 grade 3 military class Regulus. When deciding on a power plant, you should look for the plant with the least amount of stealth emissions and or lowest request time that has enough power for your build. So I'll be adding a slipstream. It's grade 1, stealth class, has almost 1800 max power generation per second and a super quick 1.25 second request time. We will lose a significant amount of max power draw that we don't need and reduce the time it takes to reach that max power draw down to 1.25 seconds. I'm choosing the slipstream to reduce power up time from a cold start or an EMP attack and to reduce my detection range. Let's discuss its coolers. These cool your weapons and components after they've overheated. The standard coolers on the 125A are the size 1 grade 3 military class bracer coolers. This is one component that you do not need to upgrade, however, if you want the absolute best performance that's not really worth the cost, I recommend adding zero rushes. They are grade 2, competition class, with a cooling rate of 238 kilos per second and a request time of 3 seconds. By upgrading these, you are reducing your power up and EMP recovery time by 9 seconds, but slightly lowering your cooling per second, however, we don't need the extra. For a full explanation of how power plants and coolers work, or for an explanation on how kilo per second is not a unit of measurement, check out my guides to power plants and coolers. Shields and QT drives are coming soon. Now for its shield generators that protect our ship from these components. The 125A stock shield generators are the size 1 grade 3 military class all stop shield generators. This is another decent stock component that you don't have to upgrade, however, we want to maximize our survivability, so I'll be adding an FR-66. It's grade 1, military class with an HP pool of over 6100, a 306 HP per second regen rate, blocks a minimum of 50% ballistic fire, has a 3.85 second damage delay, a 5.5 second down delay, and a 10 second request time. Using the FR-66s is better than the all stops in every way except its emissions. If you'd like some extra shield pool and ballistic protection at the cost of a much slower recovery time, an honorable mention would be the Guardian. And lastly, the quantum drive that will help you get to the stores to sell these components faster. The standard QT drive on the 125A is the size 1 grade 3 civilian class Expedition. This drive has excellent range, but it's quite slow. I prefer to use the fastest drive that can make a trip from one end of the system to the other. With the extended fuel tank of the 100 series, I would go for the Burst. The Burst is grade 2 civilian class, has 170 megameter per second quantum speed, an 11.4 per megameter fuel requirement, a 5.6 second spool up, and a 12 second cool down time. With an exception of the burst, all three of these components can be found at New Babbage. You will need to stop by Area 18 or Grim Hex for the burst. Before we get to weapons, the link to this specific loadout at Urkel.Games can be found via the link in the description. Also, if you'd like, you can head over to the channel Discord, where we have a community of over 1,700 citizens who like to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. 
and it's where I store my most up-to-date loadouts. Link in the description. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. It will be available on display in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, Desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. Now let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. Underneath each wing, the 100 series is equipped with a size 3 hardpoint, with a gimbaled size 2 M4A laser cannon. One M4A does 183 alpha damage, times 75 RPM, for a total of 229 DPS and a 2000 meter range. These cannons aren't terrible, but I think the newer player would be better off with the more forgiving CF series. Also, the 100 series is certainly nimble enough for fix, so we'll remove the gimbal and add the CF337 Panther laser repeaters. One Panther does 96 alpha damage times 275 RPM for a total of 440 DPS and a 2100 meter range. Underneath the nose, tucked inside the hull, is a bespoke missile rack with two Strike Force 2s. One Strike Force 2 does 3800 damage, has a 2.4 second lock time, and a 4800 meter tracking distance. These missiles are actually my honorable mention, due to the damage payload and avoiding countermeasures. But with the recent changes to missiles in 311, I want to go for quick lock time, so I'll add some Rattler 2s. One Rattler 2 does 3500 damage, has a 1.26 second lock time, and a 4500 meter tracking distance. Only on the 125A, underneath in the rear, also tucked inside the hull, is a bespoke missile rack with four Strike Force 2s. And you probably guessed it, I'll be adding more Rat 2s. Both the Rattlers and Panthers can be found in New Babbage, as well as these locations. If you don't have just over 100,000 Alpha UEC to purchase this build all at once, I would buy them in the following order. The weapons, shields, and power plants are the most important. Let's talk briefly about Stealth. I can recommend stealth for the 100 series, but not for surprise attacks like other ships, but instead to avoid other players who might want to take advantage of a small fish. In fact, if you're using the 135C for its extra cargo space, this would be my go-to build, as coming across the wrong player could cost you valuable Alpha UEC. So here's how I'd load it out. I'll keep the Slipstream power plant from the main build, as well as the competition class Grade 1 Zero Rush Coolers. Snow blinds are not sufficient enough and a Stealth Grade 1 Mirage Shield Generator. And you can pick whatever QT drive you prefer. For weapons, I'd equip either Mantis GT220s because ballistic penetrate shields and most importantly don't announce your location to the rest of the verse. Or if you're concerned with ammo, the Light Strike 3 laser cannons are actually more stealthy. Let's go over those stealth stats. Your IR in the 100 series after 30 minutes of flying around is around 5800 with this stealth build. So, depending on your opposition's radar, your detection range is between 2900 and 4350 if you're not using afterburn. You are free to fly around at any speed, but once you start firing, your IR goes up about 1000. This isn't that big of a deal. Now, typically when a ship uses afterburner, its IR quadruples. But in the 100i, I struggled to get my IR over 10,000. That's pretty good. But you should still avoid using afterburner if you want to remain undetected. This includes space break. So only use it if you're in trouble and need to bug out. This will be my default loadout on the 135C, but not sure I'd use it on the other variants, or at least if I plan on doing some combat. I hope you enjoyed my loadout guide of the 100 series. I'd love to hear about yours down in the comments. If you're a new player considering becoming a citizen, using my referral code in the description will get you an extra 5,000 starting off of UEC in the verse. My full review of the 100 series will be coming shortly, so make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked. I went live on Twitch just before releasing this video. Come and hang out. If you enjoy my channel, there are so many ways to support it, ranging from free options like Prime gaming subscriptions and sending out for UBC in the verse, sub club subscriptions, merch, to more generous forms of support. Head over to subliminalschannel.tv to learn how. Your support in all forms makes this channel possible. Even your viewership, liking, and subscribing goes a long way. To continue watching, here's a video I think you may like. Here's a video YouTube thinks you may like. And until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.